So hi everyone, my name is Paul Ligeti. I'm the head archivist of the Historical Society of West Windsor. And I, I have Yan Mei Wang with me here today. Um, and uh, so welcome. Uh, so thank you. yeah, th thank you for being with us. So thank you for inviting me. I'm gonna start with our first question. Um, if, if you can just give us a little description of yourself and what West Windsor means to you, uh, that would be great. So my name is Yan Mei Wang, and uh, I first came to Mercer County uh, 18 years ago as a postdoc at Princeton University. But back then, I lived in Lawrenceville. I don't live. I didn't live in West Windsor, but I do pass by West Windsor to go to work at Princeton University along Clarksville Road and uh, North Coast Road. And in 2015, I returned back to West Windsor as a resident. So previously, um, what West Windsor means a transition point in my life. And previously, before I returned to West Windsor in 2015, my life has always been in school in some sense. As a, I, will be, uh, I was a student, as a professor, and uh, as a scientist working in STEM field mainly, mainly in physics. And after I come to West Windsor, my work has changed subject to STEAM uh, with two S's. The first one stands for social science and science, technology, engineering, and art and uh, math. So after I came to West Windsor, I changed my focus to be uh, using what I have learned before previously to work on social and real world problems in West Windsor. Hmm. Great. So what, what to you makes West Windsor unique? Because obviously you're, you're here for a reason. West Windsor is not unique in the sense of our size or our population. We are a regular township in among New Jersey's 550 uh, townships and boroughs. We rank number 70 in terms of our size and population. However, for a regular town like us, we do house one of the 10 busiest train stations in Northeast America. And also we do house the top 1% uh, school district in West Windsor in the whole, across the whole United States. So for this reason, residents come here for the easy commute by train to work. Most, a lot of them in New York, and the parents send their children here to get the best education. So that makes us to have a unique mix of residents in West Windsor, that we are ranked number two in terms of the most educated township in New Jersey. So, so I know that you played a variety of roles in West Windsor. Um, where do you see yourself in the township? How would you, how would you describe yourself? I see myself as one of the many champions for West Windsor. And you are, I see you as a champion for Westminster Hall. <laughs> and there are many others. I see myself as one. Uh, I spent a lot of time on it and I introduced the infrastructure issues to our current list of environmental, educational, and social issues that most people are working on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, w what is a word that comes to mind when you think of West Windsor? West Windsor is my home right now. Um, 18 years ago, when I lived in Lawrenceville, uh, at, when I worked at Princeton University, it was my neighboring township. But right mm -hmm. now, it is my home. It's the home of my husband and my two children, and it will be our home for a long time to come. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned some infrastructure and environmental um, policies and, and things that you want to work on. Uh, can you just talk a little bit about that? So, um, I think West Windsor can improve a lot by being more proactive in introducing the proven successful policies and the programs into our township. I feel that right now we are um, going with the flow, the township is going with the flow, and which is okay for us to be a normal township. It goes smoothly without ups and downs. But if we are a little bit more proactive in terms of uh, uh, introducing these policies and programs, we can turn, really turn Westminster from a normal township into a model township in many aspects. For example, we can become a model township with excellent road without raising our taxes. We can become a model township with a tight knit but diversified community that practices equality and social justice and inclusiveness. And we can also be a model system for our environmental protection and uh, 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 that were on the um, alternative transportation efforts. And then you, you mentioned environmental, uh, can you, because I know that recently you worked uh, with several other people on the installation of the treks, the, the plastic benches. Um, mm -hmm. 
uh, collecting plastic bags, turning them into uh, inventions, and especially with you know climate change being a, a very very prominent uh, topic in in uh, especially over the last ten years. Uh, can you speak a little bit to that? So since I came to West Windsor in two thousand and fifteen. I have worked on uh, three main, uh, I have made three main contributions to our resident environment. The first one is in 2016 when I lived in New St. Princeton Junction, uh, that, that apartment complex, and uh, I was able to change the environmental unfriendly 37 passenger huge noisy bus to a 23 passenger uh, shuttle bus that hmm. is um, a quieter uh, environmental more friendly. And this effort reduced the West Indies air pollution by 21%. Uh, then last year, as you have said, um, I organized West Windsor residents and uh, recycled uh, 2,000 pounds of plastic film and wraps uh, into three benches for our parks. The first bench is located in Ash Park and the second is in Rogers Arboretum. And the third bench is coming on its way to a third park in Howard Township. And the third effort I did was uh, that I um, changed from using one-time single-use plastic bags when I shop when I shop to reusable bags now. How do you think West Windsor can improve? I mean, beyond beyond environment, beyond uh, uh, you know infrastructure. Generally, I know you mentioned some social, uh, you know, leading socially, leading culturally, and other and other ways that West Windsor can improve. Uh, what what do you specifically see West Windsor's main opportunities for improvement? For example, if I give you details about, uh, so I was talking about the, uh, we can become a model township in terms of uh, uh, excellent roads without raising taxes by introducing uh, proven successful policies. So uh, there is a policy, there is a name out there called microservicing that people use uh, the technique to treat their roads when they are not that bad yet at early stage at really low price. And with these practices, you can really catch up on fixing all the bad roads in the township with the same budget that you are having right now. Uh, West Windsor right now is spending $2.5 million every year to fix 5% of our roads, 120% of our roads needs fixing. So if we just introduce this practice, we can really fix all our roads with the current amount of money um, very in a very short amount of time. We will not be having this vicious cycle of our roads getting worse and worse. So this is one example of doing that. So what specifically about microsurfing, microsurfacing makes it different? And I, I'm, I'm curious about that. Sure. So, so usually the way we fix our roads is when the road is really bad, lots of cracks and then potholes and it's hopelessly bad. So you mill to the top two inches of the road. It's called a, a mill, two inch mm -hmm. mill. And then you, lay two inch more over the surface. And uh, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, this method is cheap and we can just do that to our roads without thinking. However, the price is a hundred times more now, we cannot do that anymore. So microsurfacing is when the road is like 10 years before it gets to the really bad stage, when it's only a little bit worn, like your clothes is a little bit, your uh, countertop is a little bit worn and you gave it a layer of coating. You gave it a layer of asphalt uh, coating to it with really cheap cheap price, so protect it for many years to come, so it will never get to the stage of being bad, and then five years later you coat it again. So basically you just maintain your road at low price, and so you never get to the stage of costing a lot of money. Now switching topics a bit, um, we asked Denny the same question, and this is a main point about Voices of West Windsor, is, uh, as I explained earlier, is interviewing people from from groups that are typically not heard in the uh, in the uh, historical societies archives. So, mm -hmm. West Windsor is known. That the word diverse is thrown around a lot, and and for West Windsor, and for the purpose of this question, diversity doesn't just mean you know racial diversity. It's diversity of ideas, diversity of ideologies, of you know religions, of cultures, etc. Do you see West Windsor as the uh, as a diverse community? I have to divide the diversity concept to many different aspects. Socially and culturally, yes, we are. Although uh, we do have a high percentage of Asian population, more of more than 40% Asian Americans, and our African American population can increase from the current 3.7% to the to the state average of 13 more than 
But socially, uh, so in terms of social workforce uh, aspects, we do need to increase our diversity. Right now, we have a large percentage workforce that takes the train and go to New York and work as IT, more than 30% of them. When we do need to increase our vocational jobs in the township, we, we do need to increase our diversity, diversification in terms of that. And, and as you know, a Ch Chinese American in West Windsor, especially, um, I was I was talking uh, with a with a number of the his, another member of the historical society, and he brought up an interesting point, which was that that when Mayor Xing Fouché was elected, it was kind of like a transition uh, between between old West Windsor and new West Windsor. You know, the old farming families uh, 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 who had been here for for a long time, and you know, newer residents. Even though Xing Fouché had been here for for a few decades, uh, but as as a Chinese American, um, if you can speak to the subject. Uh, where do you see the Chinese American and East 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 Asian American community in West Windsor? So, in terms of East Asian re residents in West Windsor, we have uh, Korean and Japanese, and uh, mainly Korean, Japanese, and Chinese residents. Mm -hmm. And for Chinese residents, uh, they are they come from mainland China and uh, Taiwan, Taiwan, and with people from mainland China counting the most amount of residents, Chinese residents in West Windsor. And uh, because I'm a Chinese, so I can speak a little bit to the subject that the Chinese community, especially uh, for the Chinese from mainland China, were, was considered by some to be a closed community. And in my opinion, I do think it has some reason with the background that uh, most of us grew up uh, in, in China, back in China. Mm -hmm. uh, the people in our China generation from mainland China, we were mostly trained in STEM. Uh, we were really good, good at science and technology before we came here. And also our government system is different from, from that of West of the United States. And after we came here, we also worked in jobs on STEM, some kind of related jobs. So we were not particularly involved that much in social and cultural activities in the township. However, um, the children of the Chinese community, the young generation, is totally different. They are involved in all aspects of the West Windsor community activity, as you probably know, if you grew up here. And uh, uh, I give this credit to really to the nice social science education in the school district that started early on in elementary school, which I learned a lot by taking the third grade course with my son right now. Uh, the online courses and I really enjoy those social uh, class that I learned a lot from his from learning in his class together with him so I think that made a huge difference in the young generation Chinese Americans here and I believe with time and communication and also the involvement of the young generation Chinese American in our township the Chinese American community as a whole will only become more and more integral into our in, become an integral part of our whole West Minister as time goes on. Yeah. So, so, and then as you mentioned that you have a, you know, a son in school, um, I also know that I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but you, you're, you're a board member at another local school in Plainsboro. Can you just speak to your experience about that, of being a board member of a, uh, a, a non, non-traditional in the sense that it's, you know, it's not community, it's not village of, of, a, of, a, of a school in uh, Plains Springs or Plainsboro? It's a, I am a board member in a Chinese culture school called a Chinese Plainsboro, uh, um, sorry, Huaxia Plainsboro Chinese School. And uh, this school usually students go there on Sunday only and take uh, language and culture classes there. So um, I became a board member because my kids go there and uh, I see myself as a liaison between the Chinese community in the school and also the rest of the community. And so um, on one hand, I always take pride in telling everybody, you know, how great the school is. We are one of the largest culture, Chinese culture school in the whole United States. We have 600 students. We have the former national Chinese school in our gymnastics and wushu. And then especially asset, a great asset for the township to have now, especially we have the Chinese dual, dual language immersion program in ad hoc. And at the same time, I also you know, communicate what I do, my community experiences to the school. Uh, for example, this time I introduced the online voting experiences to 
our school, and so we're going to use that for the upcoming board election this summer. And also, I communicate the township cultural activities to the school. And I try to invite them to participate the Martin Luther King Day event and the Diversity Day event and our environmental efforts. And I believe the communication and exposure are the best way to bring different cultures together. And then you also, I know that you also um, were in head of a, uh, the, you, you mentioned the, um, to me, the, uh, a Chinese new book acquisition in the Mercer County Library. You can speak, can you speak to that a little bit too? Uh, so I, at first was the issue was first brought to my attention when the former distributor of new Chinese books to the Westminster Library approached me and told me that the library has been buying books from them or anybody for a couple of years after the retirement of the former Chinese librarian. And so I went to the, the, the new uh, Westminster Library branch manager, Robert B. And he was open to restart the process and which he did. And so before the pandemic, we got the approval from the county to restart the new book acquisition. He's gonna get videos, we'll probably get magazines and uh, um, new children's book, adult book. And I hope that's going on well and I look forward to seeing those items on the shelf. Yeah, that's really, really interesting. The, 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 that being said, I mean, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, delving into the historical society's archives, uh, you know, you discover some things about Westerns that are not always, you know, the most positive. For example, recently the Historical Society made a post on Facebook talking about the Westerns, you know, used to have slaves. Like, like certain members of the township used to have slaves. There's not a lot of the ideas that we have about, you know, diversity and race in Westerns are about it being a great thing. There are also some faults. Um, I'm mentioning this because I also remember that when Xing Fouché was mayor, um, there was a lot of, you know, racism directed towards him as, as part of the, being part of the mayor. Um, do, you, do you think that, especially during uh, coronavirus, during uh, what, what we're talking about right now, um, especially during coronavirus, I know that nationally there has been some, you know, sinophobia. Have, have, have you or anyone else that you know of experienced that in West Windsor? Or if not, if, if the community has been really supportive, uh, can you just speak a little bit about your perspective on that? So I have been quite active during the uh, pandemic at the, the mm -hmm. peak period of May, April, May, and at that time, uh, I was handing out a lot of personal protection equipment to the township residents and township entities. Uh, no, I, to be honest with you, I read about this really? uh, uh, discrimination against Chinese for this issue somewhere, but I never experienced any to, to any slightest extent from anyone I can I have here or. Uh, or neither have I seen other Chinese residents that I know of here at least <laughs> that. I only have residents coming to me telling me how much they can such behavior. And mm. that's just the, uh, our town in this case is a great town for, mm. for Yeah, that's good to hear. Actually, I've, I've been noticing that too, especially, you know, online on the, on the, on the forum on Westman Group Peeps, that, that there's been, it seems like the community is turning more into a, typical community in that it's like tight it seems to be getting more tight-knit over time especially with you know online forms that's that's my personal perspective maybe, maybe you feel differently i i mean I, I think so i think so. i think that's one of the major changes that, uh, in the past in the recent time for westminster in a sense we are becoming more tight-knit i do think mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. do you think there's any way that westminster can make improvements uh, with the, uh, you know, East, uh, East Asian community, um, whether or not, you know, it's, it's attitudes or, you know, more amenities or, or anything that you want to speak to, really. So I think this pandemic has shown that uh, during this pandemic, the, the Chinese, I can, I can speak for the Chinese uh, American community, that we have really made a huge contribution to our township in terms of uh, distributing personal protection equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, during the pandemic, and that really shows that we are already an integral part of the commu Westminster community. Uh, but that's only for the aspects of handling disaster, disaster remediation, and there are many different aspects in the township activity moving forward together in the future. And I think, as I mentioned, uh, with the aforementioned communication and outreach efforts and the involvement of the young generation of um, Chinese American residents in town. So the whole Chinese community and the whole township, we're only going to 
as steam together, double steam in all aspects with Chinese community being a really tight, tightly woven integral strands of all aspects of West Windsor's social and economical factory. We're mm -hmm. going to really work together in all aspects together. Huh. And that was going to take some time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Can you say it again? It is going to take some time. So you mentioned that you've been in West Windsor for five years then. Mm -hmm. Um, what is the most significant change you've seen in the township over the course of those five years, especially so, given your mm -hmm. involvement in the community? So I have seen three major changes. One is the infrastructure, and then mm -hmm. it's about residential development. Uh, and the other one is the uh, community involvement, mm -hmm. community building efforts throughout the town. So in terms of infrastructure, I see the Windsor Plaza uh, located at the intersection of 571 and Alexander Road is really being revitalized. And Woody Mark went there and the uh, PJ Pancake House, uh, Japanese noodle house and the ice cream shop. So it really is becoming busier and busier. Across the street, across 571, we have the mixed food center going up and more shops are going to elsewhere center. And across Alexander Road, the uh, Nash Park is getting more amenity. We already have the pavilion and the bamboo garden built by the Lions Club, West Windsor Lions Club, and the little Japanese garden and uh, our recycle bench there. And we're getting more things in terms of the park. And in my opinion, this really is seems to be a little town center that's going on there. Um, in terms of residential development, in five years I am here. Uh, it really has changed, the biggest change really happened along the Bear Brook Road. So Bear Brook Road, you know, and I, you wrote an article about that in uh, Historical Society, one of the postings. It's only 1.5 miles long. However, this really short, narrow road, this, sh this short road housed 17% of Westminster residents. And now, just last year and this year, the last two patches of farms gave way to more than 300 units of housing. So that's the end. This, this whole street is all housing now. Uh, more than 20% of West Windsor residents live along their road. Um, I, I, my, oh, sorry, just to interrupt very quickly. I actually had no clue that it was 17% or at this point 20%. That's, yes. that's yeah. a lot more than I thought it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, this bus that I was talking about running along Bear Brook Road, traveling, you know, shadowing 200 people every day to the train station really is helpful to our environment. Mm -hmm. And I'm delighted about, really delighted about the community building efforts organized by our residents and our township, you know, in this, in this time. For example, we have, uh, we have the um, Santa Barbara Packing Program, WWP, organized by Melissa Hager, who also initiated, built our little, for our first little free pantry in West Windsor that's located by the Arts Center. And we have the uh, Voices for West Windsor program organized the, by the West Windsor Historical Society, <laughs> the SNR Mosaic Incorporated, and thank you for including me for the program. Uh, and we have the Black Lives Matter projects organized by our own student, Daniel uh, Smith, and the African American Parent Support Group. We have our junior world Wushu champion, uh, um, Alex Ni, uh, uh, which is a young, which is a young generation Chinese American in town is giving back to the community uh, by performing at the Chinese investment through culture events and offering free and giving free wushu lessons during the pandemic. And my, my son is taking his class right now. Uh, we have the reusable bag effort organized by uh, Terza Worman, and we have the uh, West Winter Give back, Gives Back program organized by the township. And then uh, it was like, that's all very, very, uh, that's actually all really, really interesting. Uh, uh, but for the sake of time, the, the, the my next question is going to be, um, what do you see, because I know that you're involved in Friends, Friends of West Windsor Open Space. What do you see as being the importance of open space in West Windsor? I mean, obviously, you know, speaking from a historical perspective, there's a very, very, a lot of importance to, you know, preservation of open farmland, et cetera. But, but uh, uh, what, I'm wondering your thoughts on that. So I am a member, uh, board member on the Friends of Westminster Open Space. 
And open space, and you, as you know, is important to Westminster not only because it will help to reduce uh, residential housing development, it is also very significant in protecting our environment. And so, in my opinion, I consider open space as parks, and I think I, I would like every resident in Westminster to have access to a park within walking distance, of, 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 within walking or biking distance from their home. So Friends of Westminster Open Space, and since its establishment 25 years ago, had worked with the township and preserved 1,700 acres of land in Westminster. So Fogos further maintained this land and clean litter along our streets and trails. So, but we still have a few hundred uh, acres of farmland not, that's not preserved in Westminster, and those lands are in small patches, and they are scattered throughout the town. So I see Westmin I see Fogos as you know in the future years I see Fogos and I would like Fogos to be the driving force behind preserving those uh, those those um, those green jewels I will consider them in our uh, residential housing fabric. We well we really don't want them to go away. They are really mm -hmm. important for our uh, residents. Um, and then you mentioned, mentioned the future of, of, you know, the Friends of West Windsor Space playing a role in the future, being a main driving force of the community. Um, and we're talking about preservation, but going in the direction of the future. Uh, where do you see, because over the past, you know, 30, 40 years, West Windsor has changed dramatically from a semi-rural uh, community uh, to one that's completely suburban from, a, from you know, a small town of, you know, eight, about 8,500 people to, in 1980, to around closing in on 30,000 today. Uh, where do you see West Windsor in another 30 years, in, in 2050? So 30 years is a long time. And uh, if we work together, we can make a lot of good changes. So I first want to reflect back the changes I have seen in the past 30, 18 years. Uh, that's from the time when I live in Lawrenceville and then drive by, drive through West Windsor only. And the changes I've seen from then to now. So at that time, so in this 18 years along Clarksville Road, the former American cyanamid ceased operation and the Princeton Terrace went up and along North Post Road, the animal farm is no longer there. Those are the changes I can see, I have seen in the past 18 years. So if we work together, we can make a lot of positive changes for our township, our environment to really improve the quality of life for our residents. And those are the, and the changes I would like to see is that, again, back to, I would really like to see the remaining open spaces in Westminster to be preserved. A few hundred acres, we can use them for agricultural purposes, we can use them to build a town center or an indoor uh, recreation facility for our residents. And currently, 70% of Westminster residents do not have public transportation. And I would like to see those residents have public transportation and Westminster overall increase our alternative transportation, more pedestrian, more bicyclists in general. And I want to see more uh, local businesses buzzing and probably we can even start a nightlife to have nightlife. I want to see our school district remain to be top notch, but with a more diversified, diversified student population. And I want our, our township to be a model township in terms of uh, uh, equality and inclusive, inclusiveness and justice and, uh, and diversification practices. That's all, all very, um, a lot of hopes for the future, but I, 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 I think we can get there. Um, well, yeah, well, thank you very much for you joining me and you know, the Historical Society in SM Mosaic in our second installment of Voices of West Windsor. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to you know be interviewed and share your perspectives on Westminster past, present, and future. So thank you. Thank you, Paul.